The views and opinions expressed in The Fact Is with Hollis Grant are those of Hollis Grant and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of Droids Canada Network. Droids Canada Network does not take responsibility for any content or position produced by Hollis Grant and his show. Listener discretion is advised. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Thank you for tuning in to another edition of The Fact Is. I am your host, Hollis Grant, and we are in week 48 of the year, week 48, and we are facing the the now mutated, mutated, mutated coronavirus for 2021-22 season. The Omicron virus, or the South African virus, is here it is amongst us in North America, and we will surely have to be locked down yet again as our saviors of science, the bureaucrats in the ivory towers, look upon us and start to shut down segments of society. It's already happened in Canada, where restaurants have been rolled back to half capacity. We have, in England, the mask mandate is back into full effect. We have parliamentarians in Greece discussing the next steps of how to deal with the scourge of society, the people that do not want to take a vaccine. Their discussion now involves fining individuals that have not been vaccinated. Romania has decided to come up with a solution for their unvaccinated by gathering names and lists of people to ensure that every non-vaccinated citizen is accounted for and known. While while out shopping, they are segregated into vaccinated and non-vaccinated groups. And meanwhile, we have President Joey Hans Biden deciding to shut down the borders shut down the border from South Africa and other neighboring countries where the Omicron variant is coming from. But before we get into that particular issue, we're going to go back to April 2nd of 2020. So this is last year around this time, and the article is called After Attacking Trump's Coronavirus-Related China Travel Ban as Xenophobic. Democrats and media have changed their tune. Within hours of President Trump's decisions to restrict travel from China on January 31st, top Democrats and media figures immediately derided the move as unnecessary and xenophobic, and we can all remember that time. And now they are beating a hasty retreat from that position of the coronavirus continues to ravage the economy and cause scores of deaths. Now, even back then, when the coronavirus started, we knew that he was being labeled as a racist. And that's from Joey Hans Biden. Joey Hans Biden, on February 1st, 2020, we are in the midst of a crisis with the coronavirus. We need to lead the way with science, not Donald Trump's record of hysteria, xenophobia, and fear-mongering. He is the worst possible person to lead our country through a global health emergency. But yet, Joey Hen Biden does the same thing that Trump does, and yet no one calls Joe Biden racist. Because not even Corn Pop will call him racist. And, And not even the little boys at the pool where he used the lifeguard and feel his legs would call Joey Hans Biden racist. But taken from CNN November 26, 2021, Biden restricts travel from South Africa and seven other countries starting Monday. Now we can also go back and look back in 2020 and early 2020 when Trump was starting to do the travel bans as well as other African nations and was labeled a racist for that. Yet I do not see and cannot find any articles that are accusing President Joey Hans 
being racist for doing what Trump did only a year later. CNN. President Joe Biden announced Friday the U.S. will restrict travel from South Africa and seven other countries starting Monday as a new coronavirus variant has emerged. Acting on advice from the nation's top infectious disease expert, Dr. Anthony Fauci, and the U.S. Center for Disease Control and Prevention, the Biden administration will restrict travel from South Africa, Botswana, Zimbabwe, Nambia, Leso, Mozambique, and Mali. Biden on Friday night signed the official proclamation restricting the travel of those, quote, physically present in the countries during the 14-day period preceding their entry or attempted entry into the United States. And he smelt a girl's hair. The proclamation includes a list of those exempted from the new restrictions, including U.S. citizens, lawful permanent residents, and non-citizens who are the spouses of citizens or permanent residents. But nowhere in the article does it say that Biden is xenophobic or any other news organization calling Biden and the Biden administration xenophobic. But if we're going to go and take a look at the actual data and go, hmm, people are getting sick. Why are people getting sick? Did they get sick before around the same time? We know that the flu season, and if anyone is paying attention for as long as they've been alive, that winter brings the flu. So when historically does the flu start? We've covered this exact same situation time and time again on droidscanada.com. Go back and take a look at all of our past episodes. But we will use the Government of Canada's website for Influenza Weekly Reports. And we're going to take a look at the 2017-2018 season. And we're going to go into our particular week that we are in, which is week 48. So we can see if we're going to compare week 48 now and we're seeing this increase of people being sick. This is only normal as this is the normal course of the flu. We can see on their own websites that around week, so from week 47 up until week 1 is the sharpest or the top of the curve. And after week one, and getting into really around week three, we start seeing a drop off. You might see a little bit of an increase, and that does depend from around weeks five to eight. There might be a little bit of a bump or a lag where it does not go down. And it starts steadily declining around week nine, week 11, until it all but disappears around week 23, which is in the spring. So when we're looking at these increases, this is nothing more than a seasonal flu. The flu is going to come back year over year. It has not gone away. But if you look at the government statistics, they did go away last year. And they went away the year before because every single flu case was covered under corona to help increase these numbers. Why are they increasing these numbers? When we look at what is going on and who is benefiting from this? From December 1st, 2021, the UK, UK agrees deal for 114 million more Moderna and Pfizer COVID-19 doses. 114 million more. This deal, the deal involves an additional 60 million Moderna shots and 54 million Pfizer doses for next year and 2023 and will also include access to any modified vaccinations if they are needed to combat the Omicron strain or or any other variant, the British Health Ministry says. From CBS News, November 18th, the U.S. signs a $5.9 billion deal with Pfizer for COVID-19 treatment pill. The U.S. government will pay drug maker Pfizer nearly $5.3 billion for $10 million treatment courses of its potential COVID-19 treatment if regulators approve. Pfizer asked the Food and Drug Administration on Tuesday to authorize the experimental pill called 
Paxlovid. Earlier this month, the company said Paxlovid cut the risk of hospitalization and death by nearly 90% in people with mild to moderate coronavirus infections. The drug, drug maker studied the pill in people who were vaccinated and who faced the greatest risk from the virus due to age or health problems such as obesity. So we see all these drug makers are, are making a lot of money off the public purse. CBC News, an older article from June 12, 2021. Canada paid a premium to get COVID-19 vaccine doses from Pfizer earlier than planned. Heavily redacted vaccine contract documents were released Friday. Why are these documents redacted? Why are they nothing but black? This is a public health emergency. This is a quote, bad, bad virus, and we must save it. It's two weeks to crush the curve. It's bad enough to shut people down, to close businesses, to force mandates, not for two weeks, but for two years. And yet the government, your own government, blacks out the contract details. That shows you that there are some serious issues with the bureaucrats and companies involved in the industry that is fear-mongering under the pandemic. Now, there's plenty of conspiracy theories when you get into people who've profited. And we can get into the Bill Gates conspiracy theory. But yet, this particular individual, and covered in a prior episodes on droidscanada.com, is now the largest individual landowner in farmland in America. And that needs to tell you something. That Bill Gates is advocating all along for shutdowns and to get vaccines into everybody. He's not doing this to be nice and savior of humanity. Taken from endpointnews.com from an article November 10th, 2021. Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation backs little-known biotech going after Pfizer Merrick on pneumococcal vaccine. The Bill and Gates Melinda Foundation has raised big money over its lifetime to support medicines for poor countries and it announced in its latest investment on Wednesday. InventPrize, a biotech located in Seattle suburbs, has secured a promise of up to $90 million from the not-for-profit aimed at boosting development of its pneumococcal conjugate vaccine candidate, the Gates Foundation said Wednesday morning. The foundation expects the cash will cover Phase 1 and Phase 2 studies for the vaccine dubbed IVT25. The funds will help the startup complete, or sorry, compete against two big pharmas, and some well-backed biotechs in the hunt for the best pneumococcal vaccine. Merrick and Pfizer each won approval for the pneumococcal shots this year after years of development. Merrick covers 15 bacterial strains and Pfizer covers 20 strains. InventPrize is trying to build a shot that covers 25 strains. That's one more strain than the shot, a biotech uh, worth $1.3 billion dollars is planning to planning on bringing into the clinic next year. It could be a highly profitable fight prior to the advent of COVID-19 vaccines, Pfizer's pneumococcal shots. Prevenar 13 was the most lucrative vaccine on the planet. Now this shot can in is used for pneumonia. Pneumonia is also linked to what other current deadly disease is the world fighting now, the COVID 19. So it's a hand in hand partnership. Now, going back to how much money and where the money is spent, and we can look at one of Pfizer's largest expenses. The largest expense for Pfizer is $11.6 billion, and that's on selling informational and administrative costs, so advertising expenses in 2020. Their largest expense is advertising. 
Now, if you can go and think back of all your favorite TV shows, and at the end, they always list the sponsors, and thank your sponsors, thank our sponsors, and you will see Pfizer everywhere. Going back to the statistical data, we can see that for the next few weeks, right up until week three, we're going to see increase after increase of people being sick from the Omicron variant, which is just the next year's flu. In the meantime, public officials, bureaucrats, and those sitting in government positions will sit there and tell you to wash your hands. They will tell you to stay at home. They will tell you not to congregate with people during Christmas. They will tell you not to see your family. They will tell you to isolate as much as possible. And they will tell you to have sex with a sheet. They will tell you to have sex with a mask. And they will tell you to have sex with a glory hole, all of which has been recommended by public health officials. And yet, the flu will die off around week three, and the process will continue. And all over the world, emergency orders have not been rescinded. Countries around the world are still operating on mandates, which are not laws, that have been designed for two weeks to flatten the curve. But welcome to 2022 in the Omicron curse. I'd like to thank you for listening to The Fact Is. I'm your host, Hollis Grant. You have yourself a great week. Dan, what happens every Thursday? That would be DCR Droids Canada Radio. And what time is it at on Thursday? That's from 9 till 11 p.m. Dumb question. Where do you find it? You find that at accessradio.ca. And what's the best part? It's 